Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to create a liquefied mesh. So the right part is pretty much the original mesh. And on the left side, you see all this uh, liquid spilling out of the cutting area and at some other places. So we've, before we start from scratch, I would like to go through the setup so we kind of know where uh, or how we work. We just take Tommy and clip his arm off. I purposefully cut it a bit oblique so it's mathematically a bit more challenging. And we are going to just keep the cutting area and scatter a few points. We will also scatter some points at other places and combine those. The next big step would be to guide these curves through a uh, curl noise or guide these points rather through curl noise and then we have a bunch of um, additional points that are being scattered around these curves and then we kind of have these mixture of points and curves which we will then turn into a volume. With a bit of massaging these attributes on these points um, we can then uh, define their point scale so that way this process is a bit more controlled and we also get the volume from the arm we had before and I just combine them. Um, this is still smoothing the drips but then this is the combination of both and you can see that this is a bit sharp so we use a blend function to smooth out both volumes so there's not that much of a visible transition it's rather smooth and then we remesh the entire surface and I also did some more um, yeah, we don't need to discuss this. That's the basic effect and in the end it is going to look like this or similar. So let's start with just the arm uh, in a new scene. So you would first of all create um, Tommy and disable the cloth and also the textures. And then we can just uh, clip it off. So you would just set the clip node and if you want to you can hit enter and move it like that or um, if you're not so used to um, doing that you can just use numbers so maybe something like 1.5 and we would change the direction to something that's um, almost straight not quite and then you move the distance over you don't need to use specific numbers for that just cut something off and now you can see that the mesh is open at one part and I just want to have this area so there would be polyfill but in this case I think we can just use the divide node and say remove shared edges so that way we are left with just the cutting area and I mean this polygon is quite irregular but we don't really care uh, we can scatter points here right away you see the pattern is not perfectly random if you need or absolutely need to, this to be regular then you could say resample plus um, remesh so you would maybe try something like 0.02 on the resample and copy this value over to the remesh node. Um, I find this a bit over the top in this particular case but still feel like showing this to you so that way you would have a potentially better distribution. Let's disable resample and remesh because in fact we're interested in the opposite. We don't want to relax the iterations. We are happy with having very random points. And I don't want to work with a forced count but rather a density scale. 
that feels a bit more procedural in this case. Let's enable the clipped arm to get a better sense of the scale. And um, now we would just try some very naive thing. We would just guide these points through a noise field without any further ado. So we would first of all enumerate these points. So we have some IDs. They are called index on the points. You should see now for each point an individual index number. So once we create duplicates of these points, we can keep track of their original point number. So next we may want to use a for loop and we can define the number of steps by changing the iterations and we would just use an attribute wrangle that is displacing the current position by some curl noise. Mm, this would happen based on the current position. And um, you can click here and you would see that the points are displaced pretty far. So it makes sense to normalize the noise function and multiply it by the distance you want in each step. So you can see the points are now displaced until here and um, with each step they are pushed for further. So the gather method should be changed to merge so that way you can see how the points are being transferred along the noise field. Now the reason this is looking a bit too smooth is the frequency so you would just multiply the position vector by some number and then you get a more crazy pattern. Now each of these points in a row have their um, a common index so we can just use an add node and um, use that to connect these points so you would say by group attribute index so that way we got these curves but you see they are quite chaotic and they also intersect with the base mesh so we need to find a way to rotate these curves um, in this stage when we have the noise um, and make the curl noise just show or go into the right direction. Other than that, I think uh, it's fine. So the scale would work, but let's just have a look at a more complex function. I just switched over to the original document and inside the curl noise, you can see that um, we also use uh, first a way to don't uh, go back. So we just have a displacement that goes forward. And I did this with a smooth function. So I kind of catch the curves that want to go in the intersecting direction, in the back direction, and kind of rotate them or push them to the front again. Then we're normalizing the vector um, multiplying it um, by a matrix. This dihedral function is essentially creating a matrix that is taking the direction along Z and is rotating it to the original normal we had, which is basically the direction away from the cutting area. So the rest is just a matter of frequency and offsetting the pattern. Um, I can illustrate this real quick. If we offset the pattern, we basically get a new variant and the frequency is obvious. If you turn it up, it will get more complex or more crazy, if you like. All right, um, let's just redo this. So we are by basically isolating the curl noise function. So let's just call the node accordingly and isolate the curl noise here.
that will be the first step. Mm, this is the frequency, so let's explicitly call it that way. And there was also an option to offset the pattern, so we get a bit more of um, different ways of laying out these drips. Now the frequency is a vector, so we can individually change the frequency for each direction. So channel V frequency. And the other vector is offset. I will just change one component of offset. I don't really, um, it's probably just the Y component for moving it and then the deformation is a vector. All right, the other steps were about uh, pushing these in one direction. Let me just illustrate what it looks like uh, without it so we don't type too much code without actually understanding what's going on. Now the frequency should be more than zero, of course. And once we're in the range of four or five, we get something that may fit. Now let's leave it here so you can see that this is a bit problematic, the way it is. And this is why we have to um, first push it away from Z. So we use the smooth function from a negative minus two to positive 1.0 and we just change the component Z. So it's, yeah, sorry, it was called disp. So disp Z, and then we smoothly map this from minus two to 1.0, and it's still the disp Z component. So the difference is quite obvious. If you disable the smooth line, then you see now it's pushing more in one direction. But the Z direction is not really what we're working with because we have an individual direction here. So let's um, go back to the divide stage. And we would like to know the normal that is pushing away from the cutting area. A normal node will create such a normal. It is set to points. That way you uh, see that we're now pushing in the wrong direction. You, so you, you would reverse this. And um, this would be the, the initial normal. So this is one thing we would use in our wrangle. So you could say, all right, let's um, just rotate. Mm, the current normal, or excuse me, the, the displacement vector to uh, the normal. So we did this by using dihedral from positive Z to the original normal. All right, let's try this. The disk vector is multiplied by dihedral. And we take the Z direction again and um, use the normal we had there so we can rotate it to the front. Let's have a look what it looks like. So now you can see we're still having a three-dimensional vector and at the same time um, it's now actually using the correct direction. So once we connect these points you can see now it's more believable even if I change the offset or something, it would um, always look convincing in terms of the direction. Now, one thing, if you're really careful, is there's a bit of a gap. And this is because in the first iteration of this loop, we're already pushing these um, points away from the surface. So if you cannot really live with that, 
I think I yeah used a merge, so we're keeping the original um, the original points there. So we don't need to program this. We can just say keep the first ones, merge it with the other stream from the for loop, and then combine it. So that way, it would be more accurate. It doesn't really matter in our scenario, but this is maybe more correct. Okay. Then the next step would be to work with these curves. Um, we would first of all want some information about the U coordinate, which is running along the curve. So the start would be a zero and the tips would be a one. And there's a float attribute. So it's running from 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.9 up to the end, which is 1.0. And one easy way to get this is a resample node. So this is the curve view attribute we need. Let's just mimic or yeah, redo that resample. And we would say curve view. And also, we don't really want this rough resample, we would rather have a nicer resolution. And we set these to subdivide so it remains smooth. And if you need more density, you could say the length should be even shorter. Now, more importantly, the curve U attribute will be remapped to a point scale. So take the curve U, translate it to P scale. So this would be a new attribute coming up here. And you should use a ramp later on, but first of all, we want to say it should start rather thick and the tip might be smaller. So you could use these kinds of values to get started. And then later on, we will shape this even further by using a remap. Let me show you the original file quickly. So the mapping in my case was a bit more crazy. It was um, because I wanted to mimic the drips. I used this kind of wave shape to make it more exciting. And in our scenario, we keep it simple for now. Um, but if you want to mimic it, just set it to B spline and bring in a few points. You can design this later. I just want to get the concept across. The reason we are setting up the P scale is we want to translate this into a liquid. So VDB from particles would then uh, given the resolution is fine enough, you would see this is being translated into a signed distance field. And we can now, instead of changing the point radius inside this node, we would go back to the remap and just define our own minimum and maximum resolution. And you see when the curve goes down, then this actually breaks because we don't provide enough resolution. So you would carefully reduce it carefully because voxel fields are very uh, requiring lots of memory so you should not go all the way down but keep it well in a in a proportion that works with your computer and with a desired effect all right let's see what are the next steps here um, we're pretty far already but what we haven't done is we haven't created those drips flying through space. So the way I did it, I went back to the for loop and just grabbed some of these points to replicate them. So we go back here and we would like to refer back to, let's say, a bunch of these points. And a group expression is a fast way to filter out a few of these. So there's a preset if you switch to points. And then you would say, I want a 30% chance. And maybe we create a quickly a slider. So channel float chance. And you click on this little button, then you have a way of controlling uh, the amount or the percentage of the points. And in order to bring in some more uh, ways to choose from, you would say channel integer seed and that way you can ch change the random selection. All right, the reason we do that is we want to blast all the other points. 
So let's choose the point group called group one and delete unused. We don't really need this group any longer. And I want to delete non-selected. So we're just keeping the selected points and to not have them sit right on our curve, we want to jitter those points. Jitter then, jittering them would offset them randomly so they are a bit further away from these points. And to actually make them look like bubbles, you would then use the point replicate. The point replicate is um, maybe happy with just six duplicates. You would say maybe sphere and the scale would be reduced until you still see kind of their origin. Maybe something like so works. Uh, another attribute we also need is a um, P scale. So maybe you would, um, because I want to use the same VDB from particles, it would make sense to also provide a P scale. So let's just use an attribute wrangle for that. I'm not sure yet what to use. So V at P scale equals channel float scale. So we can play with this value in a bit. Make sure to also name the wrangle accordingly and then we can merge this. So you see we have huge bubbles there. So we could just try a much smaller value. Keep in mind, we also have to um, smooth this vector field. So we should provide a bit of size uh, to not lose them altogether. Now, one more thing that may be interesting is um, moving those points a bit away from their um, current position. So there's a normal we can actually use. It's still there. So if you want to, we can push it with a peak. So you could try to just move them by 0.02 or so. Let's see whether, excuse me, before the replicate, but then let's see whether this has an effect. If I move them here, oh, it does not push them. Seems like my uh, replicated or my uh, jittered points do not have the normals because I've updated them. So disable that and then you can peek them there. So they move along the general cut direction and now we should be good to go. Again, I think I have to correct the remap. So if you haven't already, you would then optimize the, the size of all your uh, wires basically. You will have to touch them, all these values anyways, because we, the next steps we do is about smoothing, combining, blending, converting. So these um, thicknesses, these radii will constantly change. VDB smooth SDF would bring the blur. You can increase the voxel radius and you see it pretty much changes uh, the entire look until we get something that looks a bit like a fluid. You can also ex experiment with the accuracy that w which will remain a bit more of uh, these curves. I, I don't want to waste your time. So what I did was Gaussian as operation two voxel radius and iterations would be four. So it was more like this, but again, everything depends on everything. So if you bring in more curves, uh, the results will more drastically change. Also, if you change the resolution, which may have been different, it will also change. Um, so this story will go on for quite a while. Um, just believe me, this is what I did. You can also check the original file. All right, now let's accept this as an in-between um, result. And now the other part would be the Let's go all the way back to the clipped off arm. And in order to close it again, you would merge it with the divide result. So that would be the arm, which just needs one more operation, which is the reverse. 
you could also move this down don't reverse in the normal and then connect it like that if you like just make sure it's pointing outwards and once you combine it it should also be all the way white you should enable the back tinting the back face tinting and after merging these you would fuse now that way uh, the arm should be connected again and then we are ready to convert the entire structure or the entire mesh into a VDB from polygons this time and you would reduce the voxel size to 002 and you can see some polygon uh, loops here running down the arms so if you don't like this you would subdivide the entire mesh before we go on it got better here and now I want to make sure that the voxel size is being used also down here so if you don't want to um, use channel references you can just connect the VDB to the second input from the VDB from particles so they would always uh, use the voxel size provided in the VDB from polygons node now that we are combined both we will uh, we didn't combine them but we uh, connected them we will actually combine them now so let's take my smooth liquid and say VDB combine you can already say the operations should be a union and then we take our arm VDB as the second input so that will be the combination and it is of course still not really connecting so let's have a look at the next step I did in the original file which um, yeah was here we are currently so that's the combination of both and um, the blend is an interesting step here I uh, will show you in a bit it's just that we lost these um, drips too much so let's increase their size until they come back now they are a bit large and you can also experiment with uh, chance to get more of these now that looks a bit like liquid it's not quite as beautiful as before but that should work to to get started and now about combining the arm with the liquid I have been using a um, function for that which is um, blending both it's called smooth minimum so it would when both volumes are nearby it will kind of blend them together which doesn't work so well if you just use VDB smooth let me still show it to you VDB smooth SDF would blur them as much as I like um, kind of connect them but the price you pay is that the detail gets lost <clears throat> and while there are masks you can provide into the smooth in the, the VDB smooth it, it's never looked convincing to me so let's try something different now before we use this function we should make sure that we got enough space around uh, the volumes so if you want to you can uh, disable or excuse me enable the view of um, the primitive hulls so you see how much space we have around it so you would um, just go up with the voxels to something like eight if you can afford it the same uh, is true for um, some other stages so VDB from polygons should also be set to 8 so that way again we, we want to avoid clipping or getting out of range with our smoothing and this would be really ugly so let's use a volume wrangle which will then um, have three inputs first of all we want to get the combination here because the VDB combine has both parts and then we want to refer back to just the liquid and we refer back to just the arm VDB so this should be the three inputs I can show you the final result I have called it blend 
it has a um, parameter for um, defining the radius and then this is just a function and we sample both volumes from the second and the third input which is again the liquid and the arm and then the smooth minimum function will combine the arm the blood with a blend radius so this function is a vdb or excuse me a yeah and sign distance function so you would just google sign distance function and um, one result you find is from um, a from inigo Aquiles, who is doing lots of shader toy tutorials and provides the all these functions so if you scroll all the way down you will find lots of basic primitives that we can also create in a volume wrangle but for now we just want to grab the smooth minimum function which is uh, hidden somewhere here um, it's a way of um, combining two uh, volumes so that should be here i use the articles and there's smooth minimum for sdfs this article illustrates the combination and there are lots of alternatives. I will just scroll down to the latest one and copy paste the code. Surprisingly, we don't have to change much. Let's switch over to our file, which was uh, here. If you find it distracting, we can also deactivate the hulls again. And now we would just paste the code Let's uh, rename this to smooth underscore min. And the only thing we have to change is we have to say float A, B, and K. And then there is um, not, not more we have to do. So this would be the smooth function. Now we need to take samples from the second input. It's... Um, the liquid so we would just say liquid and then volume sample it from the second input it's called surface by standard at v at p so that's the position and you can just copy the line and say float arm and switch to the third input which is written as two zero one and two would be the input numbers all right um, now we would like to use this on our current stream um, on our volume so you would say smooth underscore min and provide the liquid and the arm and a radius which i haven't defined yet so let's just call it radius or blend and in the top line we define a float blend channel float blend so this should be quite small you can already see it attacking at the regions if you overdo it it for some reason uh, also affects the region down here but um, I think it's doing a good job just where we want it right at the transition zone all right uh, this would be uh, the overall effect we now would like to um, come back to a mesh so convert VDB set it to polygons so this is the typical structure you get from marching cubes so you have this uh, it doesn't handle um, oblique or yeah these kind of organic shapes too well so usually i would like to remesh it and you can before you connect it already define the resolution and the iterations and then just combine it and let it do its job so this would be a rather rough example so maybe a target size which is the edge length of 0.005 would do the job and if you're unhappy 
with the edges, you could first of all check the normals. So let's smooth them out all the way. And this should start to look like something. Mm. In the original file, I also made sure that um, the curves have different lengths. Um, this would be just a detail. And again, you would need to play with this a lot to um, actually get all the, well, all the detail we had in there before. So feel free to play with the RAMs, with the radii, with the number of points you put in there. Remember, we had the scatter function early on. So if I change this, then the entire look should also change. All right. Um, this would be the overall liquid effect. And um, feel free to download the file I've provided on my uh, website. It's called prosigen.constantinmagnus.de and there's the, I called it liquefying geometry, where I roughly explain what we're doing in each of these steps. And you can download the file right away. Thank you for watching.